John 14. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the four Gospels of Jesus. They're almost synonymous in what they say, but they have different understandings. But John 14 is a very, very powerful scripture. This is our motto scripture of this year, John 14 and 12. And I'm just going to touch back on it because I want to make the Holy Spirit famous this year. I want to make the Holy Spirit famous. How many want to make the Holy Spirit famous? Mm, let's do it. John 14 and 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, these, these words are written in red, and red means they're important. If they're written in red, that means Jesus is saying them. Everybody say, this is Jesus talking. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me. Any believers in the house? Shout, I'm a, I'm a believer. Clap your hands if you're a believer. He says, he that believe in me, the works that I do, he, who's he? Us. Will also do and greater works than these. He will do. Because I go to my father. And whatever you ask in my name, just like my wife just declare that this sickness be gone on the person that's watching, that she got a call about tumors. Can I tell you that that thing in the name of Jesus, if you agree with us and we agree with him, is completely annihilated right now. It's done. Shout, it's done. In my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask, again, he says, anything in my name, I will do it. I will do this. Everybody say, God's going to do it. Now, he says, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you, how long? Forever. Now, he explains who this helper is. It's not the spirit of church. Hello? It's not the spirit of ask for a blessing all the time. It's the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. Everybody say, I know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. He makes a very clear distinction. He dwells with you. And when I'm done, when I'm, when I'm resurrected, the day of Pentecost, they don't know this yet. He says, he will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. He's already talking. Watch this. He's already talking family. He's talking family, y'all. He's not talking religion. He's saying, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. In other words, I'm not abandoning you as family, but I am sending you a helper, and he is going to come be with you. And he will be in you. But he says, you know him. The world does not know him like you know him. And so while I'm calling this making the Holy Spirit famous, if I could just, if I could just subtitle this, this message, it would be, I know. Look at your neighbor and say, I know. I know. Father, I ask that you would just take this right now. Holy Spirit, let it fall on words on ears that have a desire to hear in Jesus name and everybody shout amen. amen clap your hands as you're seated making the Holy Spirit famous making the Holy Spirit famous making the Holy Spirit famous God we know Jesus we know but the Holy Spirit seems to be almost like the most forgotten part of the Trinity. People know, uh, they, re they sing it at the end of a, a benediction, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. They know about this Holy Spirit, but I believe God is raising up a church to make the Holy Spirit famous. I believe if he's famous, then we don't have to do all the work that we think we have to do. Instead of us making ourselves famous, let's make God famous through the Holy Spirit. So where is the Holy Spirit? I'm going to ask some questions. I'm going to teach a little bit and preach a little bit. But how many know that God lives where? Where does he live? A class participation. Our Father who art in heaven. How many know God is in heaven? God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and don't leave the truth part out. Worship him in spirit and truth. 
Our Father who art in heaven. Where is Jesus right now as we speak? He's sitting at the where? The right hand of the Father. We find that out because after he has ascended, he, uh, he gives gifts, fivefold ministry. Stephen is one of the seven chosen to serve after the apostles. And as he's serving, the Holy Spirit falls on him. He's brought into question. And he sees heavens opened up right before he gets stoned to come uh, to, to die here on earth as a martyr, the first martyr in the Christian world. He sees heaven and Jesus is standing at the right hand of the Father. So we know God is in heaven and Jesus now, he is Lord over heaven and earth and all things below the earth. And I've explained to you that you have, to, in order for you to have legal authority on earth you have to have a body and so Jesus when he got up out of the grave his spirit didn't just get up his soul didn't just get up but his body they looked for his body on resurrection Sunday and the body wasn't there because Jesus has full authority on earth and in heaven God there's no other name given to him that he is a name that's that's any above him because his name all power has been given to him on earth and in heaven and all things below the earth. How many know that's talking about all domains? All domains. Jesus has full authority. Everybody say, Jesus, Jesus. Has, full has full authority. But he didn't stop there. He said, I want you to wait for a promise because that promise is going to give you what I have. And so he, 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 he resurrects. He goes to heaven. God's in heaven. Jesus is in heaven. But the third person of the Trinity, if you want to say that, is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not in heaven. He is on earth. Hello. There's a ghost. There's a person. He's a spirit person. And he, the beautiful thing about God is God is omnipresent. So, Jesus was not omnipresent when he was on earth. He was only one person, just like you and I. But the Holy Spirit can be anywhere at any time. He can be in China right now doing a work. And he can be on 1887 Powder Springs Road, Marietta, Georgia, right now with us. But the most effective thing... That happens is when you receive the, the, the Holy Spirit after salvation is you become inundated. He dwells not with you, but in you. Yes. See, the Holy Spirit, he, he is around us, or he is upon us, or he is within us. When he's around us, you feel the presence of God. You feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. When he's upon us in the Old Testament... People like Saul, the Spirit of God would come upon them and he would prophesy. Just a normal man would prophesy. All through the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon people, come upon people, come upon people, come upon people. And then Jesus shows up and he, and, and, and the first person that, I, that got filled with the Holy Spirit got filled because Mary shows up at Elizabeth's house and, and Jesus is inside of Mary and the baby leaps inside of Elizabeth because the person who does the baptizing is not the pastors it's not Mary it's Jesus Jesus is on the inside on the inside of Mary Mary is filled with child because of the Holy Spirit no man knew Mary the Holy Spirit overshadowed and God spoke the word inside of her and now she's pregnant with Jesus by God and she has the Holy Spirit, and she walks into her sister's house, uh, her cousin's house, Elizabeth, and Elizabeth, John the Baptist, was inside of Elizabeth, and the babe leaped, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she begins to speak as another person. She begins to talk about the goodness and greatness of God because the, when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit fills you, you don't talk negative anymore. You talk about the good things of God. You talk about what God is doing in your life. You start loving everything and everybody. I know that's hard to understand, but when you're filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, love just emulates out of you. If love doesn't emulate out of you, ask God for another fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. It could be that you need another touch. Because how I many know that love is the key of, of knowing if somebody's baptized in the Holy Spirit, not just tongues? 
You can speak in tongues, and I do it, and Paul talks about it. He does it more than all of us, he said. But you can speak in tongues and still act like the devil. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is on earth today, and here's what he is looking for. He's looking for yielded vessels. Everybody say yielded vessels. The most dangerous person, you've heard this. How many have heard this? The most dangerous person in the world is a person with power and has no knowledge. How many have ever heard that? Man, it's dangerous. They've got more power than they do knowledge. That's a dangerous person. I remember when I was a kid, uh, my mom and dad gave me a Yamaha 80. It wasn't a very hard uh, motorcycle, but it had a lot of power. When I was a young kid, that, that, was, that, was, that was a cool thing, you know. Um, and I didn't know how to use a motorcycle, but I, I said, let me just get on this thing and give it a ride. And so, you know, it's got a clutch you pop and you kind of, how many know what a motorcycle, you, 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 you give it just a little gas, you don't and let the clutch go because it, you're going to have issues. Well, nobody told me. Nobody told me, so I just I jumped on there, and I just gave it gas and popped the clutch, and I remember that thing riding off in the sunset. <laughs> While I'm on my behind watching it, I am hurting as bad as I can hurt, and I'm just watching that thing take off because I, I, I got a hold of some power with, not, with no knowledge. And you can be dangerous when you have power with no knowledge. Right? You read that in the scripture. You have a zeal. With no knowledge, it's consumed us. We read in 1 Corinthians where he, he's trying to tr uh, trying to get the church to understand you guys are, are very eager in using the spiritual gifts, but you don't have any knowledge. And so a lot of people will tell you that the most dangerous thing or person is a person that has power with no knowledge. Somebody who has uh, the ability to, to blow up a nation, maybe another nation. And they don't understand the ramifications of it. They haven't thought it out, but they've got all this power. Power is a dangerous thing when it's in the hands of somebody that doesn't know how to use it. Right? So a lot of people say that, but I'm, I'm going to submit to you something more dangerous than people who have power with no knowledge. There's something more dangerous than a person who has power with no knowledge. The most dangerous person in the world is a person who has knowledge but doesn't have power. How is that possible? Well, let's look at it real quick in 2 Timothy 3 because we find that that's what happens in the last days. 2 Timothy 3. We're going to get there probably this week as you read it. But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. Stop there, look at me. Most people would think that that must be dealing with people in the world, but it's not. In the last days, perilous, perilous, danger. Dangerous times are going to come in the last days. Wouldn't you want to know what that danger would be in the last days and to stay away from that danger? How many would like to know how to stay away from that danger? How do you stay away from all the dangers? These are, I think they're either 13 or 18 notable characteristics of people in the last days. Headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure. I believe we're in those days. I believe we're in those days. We have lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. You would think that he's talking about the world, but he's not. He's talking about this. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. God doesn't just say this is the most perilous, most dangerous thing in the last days. But he says, if you are around these people, get away from them. Get away from people who look godly but deny the power. 
They are the most dangerous people in the Bible right here. God says in the last days, the most dangerous people are religious people that deny the power. Where's the power come from? God gives you purpose. Jesus gives you, gave you people, and the Holy Spirit gave you power. Wait, and I will endue you with power. People that have religion without power are more dangerous than people who have power without religion. And the power of God is not just so you can jump, shout, run, and dance. The power of God is so that you can boldly declare spirit and truth to a generation that knows neither one. They don't just know, don't, they, they don't just not know the Holy Spirit, as the Bible says, but they don't know truth. Therefore, if a people knows only religion without power, they don't have the power to have truth in them. Are you following me? So when we give something to the world, it's got to be from a place of the spirit and power because we will boldly tell them the truth. We cannot give people our version of the truth because we are operating without power. The Holy Spirit, listen to me, maybe I just need to talk for a second, you're just listening. The Holy Spirit will not tell others in the world of things that are not God's standard because we don't want to offend. Matter of fact, Jesus said, if you're with me, it's going to offend people. You're not responsible whether they're offended or not offended. You're responsible to follow the Holy Spirit, to share your gift of salvation to others, and whether they want it or not, that's a different story. Can I go on? I got 17 minutes. Can I go on? Anybody else shout amen if I can go on? Would it be better if I talk like them? Anyway. I may do it here in a minute. I, I'm getting excited myself. Watch this. I watch this. This wasn't in my notes, but I want you to see it. Acts 2. Acts 2 and 37. Flow with me if you're out back there. Acts 2 and 37. Acts 2 and 37. It says this. They'll catch up. It says, now, Peter's standing up, full of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, he's full of the Holy Spirit. And here's how the people respond. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and you shall receive the re gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you, to your children, to all those who are far off, to those in 2021, in March 2021, sitting in this room today and watching by broadcast, the promise of the Father belongs to you as well. But here's what he says. They all received Jesus. But what was their response when they heard the gospel? They were cut to the heart. Because the gospel is going to do some cutting on people. They were cut to the heart. And what was their response? What do we need to do? And Peter says, you need to repent. Now, this is all under the Holy Spirit. Are y'all catching this? Raise your hand up and say, I'm catching this. Now, that was people all over gathered in Pentecost, not the religious folk, just people that wanted to know what to do. Now, I want you to look at verse chapter 7 and 54. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now here are the religious folk with Stephen. Stephen gives them the same message of Peter. Tells them who Jesus is. But he's talking to religious folk. 
And verse 54 says, and when they heard these things, they were what? Cut to the heart. Now, that was the same thing that happened on the day of Pentecost. People were cut to the heart, and their response was, men and brethren, what shall we do? Stephen gets up in front of religious folks, tells them the same story, and they were cut to the heart. And the next thing you read is they gnashed their, their teeth at him, and but him being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, Jesus standing at the right hand. Two different responses from the same message. Do you know I can preach this message and people get happy in the room and I can preach this message and other people in the room get mad? Why is that? Because it's not about the message being given to you. It's about the response to the message being given to you. In other words, will you receive what God is saying or will you deny what God is saying? The religious people, they wanted a form of godliness. They want to look high and mighty. They want to seem like they have it all together. They want to make sure people see them. They want to make sure that their prayers are long and lofty. They want people to come to them for the answers. But God says, that's not my kingdom. My kingdom has nothing to do with that. My kingdom has nothing to do with trying to elevate people. My kingdom elevates me. And when you're full of the Holy Spirit, you're not elevating yourself. You're elevating other people. If you want to know how to have an incredible relationship with other people, you don't have to have a relationship series, 101. You just have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will tell you how to tell, talk to people and how to treat people and how people can treat you. When you have the Holy Spirit, you don't have a love issue. You have a Holy Spirit issue. If you have a love issue, it could be that you need to spend time with the Holy Spirit. Because if you spend time with the Holy Spirit, your love issue, you won't be mean. You won't be jealous. You won't be angry. You won't be envious. You won't be striving with other people. You won't be looking at others wishing you had what they had. Because when the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you, you have a love, a greater love. Why? Because you have fellowship. You know. Everybody say, I know. I know, I know the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not die for you. Listen to me. Write it down if you want, but remember this as long as you live. Jesus did not die for you for you to know about the Holy Spirit. He did not die for you to know about the Holy Spirit. He died for you to know the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not die so that he could tell you a story about how he lived. Jesus died and he said, and he said it is expedient that I go away, but if I don't go away, the helper cannot come and he will be with you and he will be in you. I want to make the Holy Spirit famous. Why? Because if the Holy Spirit is famous in your life, everything you do will be the will of God. How many want to be in the smack dab will of God in your life? If you want to be in the will of God, you've got to be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, I'm in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Now, Luke 17 and 20, Luke 17 and 20, they asked Jesus. They asked Jesus. Brooklyn asked me. She was asked by somebody else. What's his kingdom about? And I thought this is a good little point I want to bring out. Because the kingdom of God is not a place only we're going to. It's not a place that uh, we're waiting for. They said to Jesus, tell me about this kingdom. The Pharisees, the religious folk trying to catch him. Tell us when the kingdom of God is going to be coming and, and going to help us set up rule over this Rome and all these people. And, and so in today's vernacular, you'd be like, tell us about this kingdom of God who's going to set up rule over the White House. Come on. Come on. Tell us about this kingdom of God who's going to rule over Congress and over all the de Democrats and Republicans and Independents. Tell us about this kingdom of God because we want this power. We want this kingdom so that we can tell them what to do. And he says, this, isn't, this ain't the kingdom. The kingdom of God has nothing to do with your thing. He says, now when the Pharisees asked where the kingdom of God would come, he said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. I wonder when the kingdom's coming. Well, it won't be long now. Jesus tells them in the next verse. He says in verse 21, nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. It's within us. How is the kingdom of God within us? Because God is now in us. When you're saved, 
You receive the Holy Spirit, the Bible says in Ephesians, as a guarantee of your inheritance. You have a guarantee, a ah, guarantee, 100% guarantee. Not a 90%, not a limited warranty, 100% guarantee. When the Holy Spirit hits your life, how do you know? Because when the Holy Spirit hits your life, you think different. You love people different. You, 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 you didn't cry, but now you cry some. You, you, you get emotional about the things of God. You, you get excited about going to church. When the Holy Spirit's in you, you, you actually are excited to go to church. Nobody has to tell you, drag your tail, get you up out of bed, because when you know the Holy Spirit, you want to be around God's people. Why? Because you have something in you that they have in them. And when you have what you have and I have what I have, the Bible says we get together and two of us together operating under the same amounts and principles of the laws of the kingdom can cause damage. Whatever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. If you really want to read that translation right, it's whatever I bind on earth, it's already been bound in heaven. So there's no sickness in heaven like my wife just said over somebody. There's no sickness in heaven. So we agree with what heaven says because heaven is not a place we're just going to, but heaven is a place we're operating from. The kingdom of heaven is on the inside of us. That's why you have authority. That's why you have power. That's why you can speak to a devil and cast the devil out. You're not speaking to God on behalf of the devil. You've got authority to speak to that devil. You have authority to speak to, to sickness. You can eradicate sickness by the authority that's on the inside of you. Why? Because the kingdom is operating. It's not with observation. It is with participation. So this is the law. That whatever is on the inside of you, this is a law, is going to come out of you. Everybody say it's a law. Whatever's on the inside will come out of you. Whatever's on the inside of you is going to come out of you. Let me ask you, if you're in fellowship, who are you in fellowship with? Because if you want to know who you are, look at the five friends you hang with. Are they full of faith? Are they in life crew? Life crew is one of the greatest. We had a life crew link up meeting last night with all the leaders. Phenomenal job. What these leaders are doing. We're, we're a third into it, and you can join. And some of you aren't joined. And I understand that because the Bible says that 75% weren't interested. Oh, pastor, that hurt. <laughs> but you have, you have a small group somewhere. Might be in the club. It might be the people you talk to on the phone that have unhealthy, unwholesome talk. But everybody has a small group. We're asking for you just to change it and get around people that have faith. Because if you have people that are of faith in your small group, you're going to start acting like them. The man with the issue that Jesus said at the pool of Bethesda said, do you want to be made well? His answer was, I don't have anybody to put me in the water. He's like, man, I'm Jesus. So you don't have to put you in the water. Why did he have that mentality? Because he had hung around a social system around the water for the past five years of everybody talking about how sick they were. So he got used to being sick. Do you know you can be used to being sick because that's all that's inside of you? Or you can be used to having faith because that's all that's inside of you. I mean, you walk up to a mountain, somebody looks at that mountain, and they say, well, I just don't think how, I don't know how we're going to do it. We better turn back around. I mean, we could go around it, but it's going to take months. I don't know. We should just give up. And then you have other people that are Joshua's and Caleb and say, well, if God told us to speak to that mountain, and that's powers on the inside of me, and I have the kingdom operating on the inside of me, I'm going to say to that mountain, be thou removed, cast in the sea, do not doubt in my heart, but believe what I say, and I receive it, and I will have it. And I want to hang around people like that, but the only way I can get like that is to hang around people like that. Got to hang around people that are full of faith, full of power, full of authority. How do you do that? You get around people full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. When they're full of the Holy Spirit, they're full of God. They're full of the will of God. They're full of the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit, is, he is like a beacon on the inside of you. He's your GPS. He's your little satellite, little honing link, so that when things are going wrong, you can just upload a link. 
Romans 8, 26, it says, when you don't know what to pray, the Spirit of God on the inside of you maketh intercession for you with groanings and utters which cannot be understood because he is making intercession, read Romans 8, 27, according to the will of God on your behalf. He's not interceding, hoping that you're going to make it, hoping that something's going to break down or something's going to happen. He's not interceding, I hope God you're going to come through. No, he's interceding on behalf of the will of the Father, and the will of the Father is that you're blessed, that you're highly favored, that you're an overcomer, that no weapon formed against you can prosper. You can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. And so while your flesh is screaming and saying it's not going to happen and your mind is telling you and letting you down and playing tricks on you and overwhelming you and your heart is hurting, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is saying, I'm ready and willing and able to agree with the kingdom that I'm of. Everybody say, it's in me. Amen. Used to be a commercial called Ragu. They say, what's in that? It's just in there. It's in there. It's in there. Holds fingers up like an Italian. It's in there. I'm in there. You're in there. But what comes, what, I got, I got just a couple minutes. Look at me. What comes out of you is a product of what is in you. If what you are seeing coming that is out of you is not what you want, you have to not look outwardly, but look inwardly. <clears throat> we got projectors right here. You see this projector right here? You can't see it. We hit it really well, so you didn't have to look at it. If the cameraman can ca capture it for the people watching, right here is a little white box. Show up there. That's the screen. Show the white box. Just kind of zoom up. You can barely see it right there. Now show the screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That projector is putting out on the screen what the projector has on the inside of it. The screen knows only to be a screen. The screen is not going to be another projector. The screen is showing you what's on the inside of the projector, not what's on the inside of the screen. We tend to make decisions based on people rather than on the Holy Spirit. The screen is just what you say it to be. If you don't like what you see, you don't argue with the screen. You change settings or the broadcast that your projector is receiving. So, if we don't like what we're seeing, we don't change what we're seeing, we change what we're saying. Because the kingdom of God operates through faith. And faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. You speak. And when you speak, you begin to change things. You speak to what? Not to the screen. You speak to yourself. If I may touch the hem of his garment. You start saying, I'm tired of how I've been for 12 years, 144 months. I've been having this issue of blood, and therefore Jesus is passing by. I know if I touch him, I will be made hell. She begins to talk to herself. Do y'all remember that? Blind Bartimaeus did the same thing. He's now Bartimaeus, by the way. He's not blind. He begins to say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He don't care who's in the room. Why? Because he knows if he can touch Jesus, his life will be changed. And Jesus said to, this, to his disciples, he says, I'm not going to be with you, but I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to send you a helper, and I will be with you. Because Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one with God. And he will tell you of me and my things. All things are mine. This is what Jesus said. And the Holy Spirit will declare it to you. The word declare means to show. 
God's going to show it to you. In other words, you're going to see it. You're not just going to feel the Holy Spirit and get goosebumps. You're going to see the Holy Spirit operating. How do you see the Holy Spirit? Because you are not observing, but you're participating. Give me two people. I need, I need two, let's see, I need, I need two males. Two males. Come up here, DJ. Yes, sir, come on up here. I rehearsed this quite well. <clears throat> come on up here. I need you to stand right here. Stand right there. If you could, sir. Stand on the other one. Now, I am going to tell you something. And I want you to tell him. And I want you to tell me. All right? It's going to hurt for a minute. But I'm only saying this when I say hurt. Don't take this to heart. It's an example. All right? Okay. Can you say it loud? You sure? With that Lakers mask on, you can say it loud. We have any Lakers fans in the house? Y'all better root for your, your man here. This is the power of what's on the inside of you. I'm going to tell you, you're going to turn around and tell him. And you're going to turn around and tell me. You're a loser. No, 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 no. Stand right there. I hate you. There's nothing good in you. You are so ugly. Why are they saying that? They're saying that because I'm saying that. Why am I saying that? Because I'm projecting on them what truly is on the inside of me. You're insecure. You're jealous. You'll never amount to anything. So while I'm telling them that, I'm really not telling them that. I've already told myself that. Because it's on the inside of me. This is the power of fellowship. God said, they said, what's the greatest commandments? The greatest commandments is that he actually was asked, what's the greatest commandment? And he said, the greatest commandment is that you love God with all your heart. But wait a minute. He said, I only asked for one. He said, let me, give you the, let me give you one that's just like it. And love your neighbor. But wait a minute. As yourself. So you want to love God, but you've got to love your neighbor. And you can only love your neighbor as you love yourself. So if you don't love yourself, you can never love your neighbor. And you can never love your neighbor if you don't love God. And you can't know who you are if you don't love God. Because if you love God, he'll show you how much he loves you. So my self viewpoint has to get fixed before I can fix anything else in my life. How do I know how to be like God? I spend time with God. You cannot come to church for two hours and expect to be like God. You've got to every day push things back and say, Holy Spirit, come into my life. Reveal to me who I am. Take out what doesn't belong in me so that when I'm with people, I'm not seeing the worst in them. Because if I'm seeing the worst in them, it's probably because I see the worst in me. So I'm projecting to screens. And that screen turns and tells that screen. And that screen turns and tells me because now we're all together and we believe it because I've been empowering him with negativity and he's been empowering him with negativity and it makes a full circle. Now we all three can go to the bar and get drunk and think how sorry we are. But it changes when you have fellowship 
with the Holy Ghost. When you get in fellowship with the Holy Ghost, you start talking like Jesus talked. Now watch this. Nowhere in the Bible do you ever and can point out where Jesus got down on himself. Nowhere did Jesus say, I'm no good. Nowhere did Jesus say, I'm insecure. I lack confidence. I don't know how it's going to happen. Why did he do that? Because he knew you were going to conform to his image, and he had to project to you what he expected you to project to others. When you get full of the Holy Ghost, you start acting like Jesus. And when you act like Jesus, you start telling others about how good God is and not how bad it's been. So you start saying this, I have faith. I have faith. I'm an overcomer. I lack nothing. I'm full of favor. So it comes back to me because that's what I'm projecting. In other words, I'm telling you, if you don't like where you are, it's not everybody else's fault. You need to spend some time with God and fellowship with the Holy Spirit and things will change. I want to know how to change my life. Hook up with the Holy Ghost. I want to know how to love people. Hook up with the Holy Ghost. I want to know how to be blessed. Hook up with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is somebody that will bless you. Stand to your feet. So how do I do that? 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 Nicodemus said, how do I get... How do I get this kingdom? He says, you, you can't, you got to be born again. He says, what do you mean? What do you mean be born again? I mean, can I go back into my mother's womb? Come out? He says, no, have, let me explain. You got to be born of water. And the second birth is born of the spirit. Oh, God, give us grace to not present to you a religion, but to present to you a bride. A bride wants to be married. A bride is prepared to be married. How do you know they're my people? He says, if you love me, because this really is about love. I said it's about love. If you're frustrated with people, and I get I get frustrated. So I'm not telling you anything I don't do. Has anybody ever been frustrated with somebody this week? I'm as close to perfect as you can get. <laughs> Just kidding. My wife's like, baby, stop saying that. But I get I get angry with people. I got angry at somebody today. Driving down, doing 50, 60 miles an hour, and they're eating my body. Big old woman. I want her just to <coughs> let her just get close, a little closer. She's like, why is she riding my tail? So that's, that's my flesh. Then my spirit kicked in. I said, she may be following you to church. So I sped up. <laughs> you see? It was, it was Pastor D's car. <laughs> With her tag on the back says worshiper. <laughs> so we, 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 we avoided a two or three agree collision. She, she drove by the church. And you know, here's, here's what's funny, y'all. Here's what's funny. This is really funny. It may not be funny to you, but it's funny to me. How you can look back over your life and see how you used to respond before you really got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I mean, you can be like, oh my God, I was an idiot. I was, I was straight up mean. My wife talked about it today. She said, I was mean. But you know what she did? She took that Holy Ghost and just channeled it. Now there's no demon in hell can stand in front of her. She cast him out. I love that about my wife. She's a demon slayer. 
And many of you are that way too because you got her spirit. How do you get her spirit? Because she projects it. And you start projecting it. But I look back over my life and think some of the stuff that I not just did, but said. The thoughts that I had. Revenge that I wanted. When you're full of the Holy Spirit, that's the reason why. Oh, God, I just help me with this. Help me with this. Uh, come Wednesday night. We'll just keep talking. That's why Jesus said, when they want to go with you one mile, call them two. When they want to sue you for your jacket, take your scarf and shirt off too. Jesus, these are hard sayings. It's not really. Because you're seeing it on the side when you're not baptized with the Holy Spirit. But once you're baptized in the name of Jesus and that Holy Spirit comes on you, you handle problems differently. Do you get in the flesh? I don't. Paul said, who is going to deliver me from this body of death? He said, every time I want to do good, evil's with me. I mean, you got a choice. Am I going to do it the old way or the new way? But if you yield and fellowship, Oh, the fellowship with God is one of the greatest things you can do in your life. Just fellowship with Him. Spend some time with the Holy Spirit this week. Getting ready for next weekend. Spend some time with Him. Read the scriptures and just sit and listen. Conversation means you hear, you hear as much as you talk. Let Him talk to you. He may tell you to do something amazing this week. You guys might partner together and see the blind eyes open. Amen? Let's put our hands up towards the heaven right now. Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you that these people here today will know you, that they will make the Holy Spirit famous. Oh, that we may know you, Jesus. The fellowship of your suffering, but also the fellowship of your resurrection. As 1 Peter says, as 1 Corinthians says, that we will have the love of God, the grace of Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, God, we're in fellowship. Everybody say, I'm in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Father, I ask that you would just open their hearts. Every head bowed, every hand down. If you, I feel specifically right now to ask you if there's unforgiveness in your heart. I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray for you. If there's unforgiving, you just, man, there's somebody you're just upset about and you can't let it go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm going to ask that the Holy Spirit work with your heart. You can listen to me now. Everybody look at me. You can pray a prayer and walk out of here and think that's all it took. You have to release. You have to release that person. And guess what? You're the one being imprisoned. They're not. And you might say, well, you don't know what they did to me. It doesn't matter. What matters is God working through that situation. And you don't probably realize it, but you, you're going to have a testimony to tell others and help others. You cannot help somebody if you're bitter. It's impossible. You'll just create more bitterness. And so I'm going to pray that God would melt your heart with the Holy Spirit. And that this week you will do what you, look at me, you don't need to wait on them to call you. You need to say, Father, number one, because unforgiveness is a sin. It's a sin. So you can't talk about the homosexuals needing to get right if you're full of bitterness and envy and anger, unforgiveness. Some sins are of the heart, some are of the flesh. Unforgiveness is ugly, and the devil uses it to keep you in bondage. I'm talking to you.
whoever those 13 are. Number one, we're going to pray, God, release. Everybody say, God, release unforgiveness from me. Say, Father, I repent for holding unforgiveness in my heart. That's number one. Number two, we're going to release them. Father, I release this person who I've held unforgiveness to. Today, I walk away full of freedom. Holy Spirit, work a work in me so that I can be more like Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you give a hand clap of praise to those people that made that decision right now? Hey, I want to thank you for tuning in and watching this message. You know, the Bible says to go into all the world and preach the gospel, and that's what we're doing here. And I thank you for watching. I want you to share it, comment, say something to somebody else. But also, if you want to support, you can do that simply by going to the website, or you can go to the App Store and download our app and do so there. Thanks for watching.